So we've talked about applications of integration and various things we can use them for. What I'm going to do here is I've got two questions for you I want you to have a crack at. So I'm going to show you the questions, let you read them, pause the video, and then have a crack at them and come back and check what you've done against what I've done here. So here you go. So there's your two questions. One is about calculating the area between the curve and the y-axis. And the second one is looking at a volume of revolution created by rotating about the x-axis in a certain domain. So pause the video and have a crack at both of those. So the first one was calculating the area between a curve and the y-axis between these two points for f. Now remember that in order to get the area a, what we had to do was it was the integral of f of a to f of b of the inverse f minus 1 of y dy. So what I have to do, rewrite the function here in terms of y, calculate my limits f of a and f of b, plug it all together, and then work it through to get the integral. So my lower limit here is 0 0.5, so that's my a. My upper limit is 2, that's my b. So if I do f of 0 0.5, what I get is I get 0 0.5 squared, so I then get a half times a half, so I get 0 0.25, or write it as a quarter. If I then do f of 2, I get 2 squared, which is 4. So there's my limits there. What I now have to do is find the inverse of this function. So if I take y equals x squared, that can be rewritten as x equal the inverse f minus 1 of y, which is going to be the square root of y. Now for the fact I'm going to do integration, I'm going to write it as y to the power of a half. So what I can then say is fine, so my area is equal to the integral from a quarter to 4 of y to the power of a half dy quick point to make is that this is essentially the same base premise and theory as integration by substitution, i.e. we're taking the function, rewriting it slightly, this time though in terms of the inverse rather than substituting in a new variable, calculating a new limits based on that, and then integrating it using that information. So if I was to integrate this, I'd get y to the power of 3 over 2, I'd be dividing by the 3 over 2, which is the equivalent of times in, by two thirds, and that would be between a quarter and four. So what I now do is plug my values in, and let's see what we get. So I'm ultimately going to have two thirds times upper limit of four, so I'm going to have the square root of four cubed, take away one over root four cubed. So what you need to do now, you plug all of that in a calculator, you work it through. Once you've done that, what you ultimately get is you get 21 over 4, or I can rewrite it as 5 and a quarter. So there you go, that's the area between the curve and the y-axis for that example. Second question was calculating the volume of the solid created if this curve, y equals x bracket 1 plus x squared, is rotated about the x-axis in the domain negative 1 less than x is less than 2. So what we have to do here is calculate this integral using the formula v equals the integral from a to b of pi times y squared dx. Now in this case we know y is equal to x bracket 1 plus x squared. So what I can do is there's two ways I can approach this integral. I can either use integration by parts on it, or I can multiply out the bracket and then calculate the whole thing as one. So if I were to multiply out the bracket, essentially what I'd be integrating is x plus 2x squared plus x cubed. So I'd be integrating that if I multiplied it out, or I could use the integration by parts on it as we've talked about before. To be honest with you, both methods aren't really too complex. I'm going to stick with this one. It's just nice, quick, simple, and straightforward. If you use integration by parts, you should still get the same answer. 
So my volume then is going to be given as pi times the integral from negative 1 to 2 of x plus 2x squared plus x cubed dx. Integrate it through and I get pi times x squared over 2 plus 2x cubed over 3 plus a quarter x to the power of 4 and that's between my two limits negative 1 and 2. Then we just plug the limits in and we calculate it through. What I'll end up getting is pi times now the upper limit is going to be 2 squared over 2 plus 2 times 2 squared over 3 plus a quarter times 2 to the power of 4. Take away the same expression this time at the limit of negative 1. We're at negative 1 over 2. So negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2 thirds times negative 1 cubed. Then plus a quarter times negative 1 to the power of 4. If I then just take all of that, work it through, stick it in a calculator, what I then end up getting is 103 over 12 pi. So that there is then the volume of the solid created if I rotate that curve about the x-axis within that domain. So we've got a couple of different applications we can use the integral calculus for. We've covered the entire set of skills up to this point that we need in order to be able to effectively work with integration at advanced higher level. We need to make sure all these skills can be worked together, combined into one, and utilised effectively if we're going to be successful in the future.